Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, tutorial. Today we're gonna do something that I enjoy like pretty much because I really like uh, the Worms games when they first came out when I was like a little kid and later on. Um, so we're gonna create some sort of a destructible terrain uh, similar to Worms and it's gonna be pretty pretty cool. So let's just uh, get it started. So we're creating like a new project. We're gonna call it Worms. Worms game and I'm gonna make it like an HD HD size just so we can you know see the whole screen and I'm gonna press create I do enjoy uh, cropping down this area like the dashed line only because uh, it, it really bothers me in this uh, usually so I'm just gonna crop it out you don't have to the first thing we want to do is I like, create the background. Now I'm cheating a little bit because I created the background in uh, Photoshop. So you don't have to, you can do whatever you want. So I made like this uh, gradient and then I added some clouds and then I clamped the cloud themselves just to look a little more, more like cartoonish. So I'm gonna just save it, I already saved it and I'm gonna drag it into the canvas. So now the thing uh, that I want to do is just align it to the viewport, center or horizontal, viewport, I'll oh, put it on top, it's the same thing, and I'm going to lock it down and we're not going to touch it anymore. So I'm going to create another layer, we're going to call it a uh, ground. So this is where we're going to do like our ground pieces. And the first thing, if, if you saw my water tutorial, so it's kind of the same technique, so I'm creating a sprite. I'm gonna make it as soft as possible with the brush. I'm taking a soft, like zero softness brush. And I'm gonna make it, uh, I don't know, like this size is okay. The color doesn't matter because we're gonna change it later. So I'm gonna just press one click. And um, yeah, I think we're pretty much okay. Next thing I wanna do is just edit the collision polygon and make it way, way, way smaller. It's way too big for me because uh, we're gonna use like the clamp effect and you're gonna see it, it's pretty cool. So. But for that we need like a really small like collision area. So this is pretty much it. I like it a lot and now we're gonna create a layer effect. Not an object effect but a layer effect. So I'm pressing the layer itself and I'm gonna go here into uh, the effects and I'm gonna add alpha clamp. Cool. So now let's see what the alpha clamp does. Basically if I'm duplicating the object you see they're kind of blending in. So what I want to do here is pressing the ground and I might change the threshold a little bit and yeah, you know what, it doesn't actually matter right now, we can change it later. I'm going to leave it at, at that. Next thing that we want to do, I'm going to delete one, I'm, I want to stay only with one of them. Okay, next thing that we want to do, we want to add some sort of physics to this object. You'll see later why. So I'm adding a behavior of physics. Cool. Now if I'm pressing play you can see it falls down. Cool, so what I want to do next is actually uh, create like a boundaries for the for, for my like uh, object for the ground. So I'm gonna create another layer I'm gonna call it bounds and I just want to make some sort of a sprite it doesn't matter like the color or whatever I'm gonna make it a different color than the, than the ground and I want to put it like around here and I want to make it a physics object as well because only physics objects are interacting with other phys physics objects and I want to interact with the ground so I'm uh, gonna duplicate it now and one more time and I'm gonna put it at the bottom cool so the next thing that I want to do is I want to duplicate this about maybe 500 times. I'm going to make it a little bit larger and I'm going to um, just go to the event sheet. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see where am I. Worms game, cool. So you see this is all my test that I did. So now basically what I want to do is I want to duplicate um, event sheet 1. Where the hell is it? Oh, it's here. So I want to duplicate this object about 500 times, I think that would be enough. So when the game starts, start on start of layout, I want to 
create 500 of these. So what I'm gonna do is add a sub event and I'm gonna make it um, a create, cre mm, oh, sorry, I'm gonna make it a repeat. Repeat 500 times the action of creating this one. Where do I wanna create it? On a random place on the map. Okay, so repeat 500 times, create object the object is this sprite we're gonna change its name uh, in a second the layer itself is the ground and the x of it will be a random of between 0 and 1920 which is the size of my screen okay now the y of it we're gonna leave it uh, at 0 so let's see what it does I'm gonna press play and I have some sort of ground falling down. Cool. So now I think I want to make it a little bit bigger so the ground will reach uh, some kind of a higher area. So I'm going to make it a little bigger and I'm going to press play again. I want it to be uh, to cover a little more than the. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Now you can notice something. You can notice that the ground is still moving like it's alive and we don't want that. First of all, because it's going to take a lot of our resources and second, because it doesn't make any sense. So what I want to do is after this has finished, I'm going to uh, stop the physics from moving. So I'm going to make it an immovable object. Now, there's mu there must be like better ways than what I'm uh, about to do right now, but I didn't you know, put too, many, too much effort into figuring it out. So if you guys have a better idea of, to, of how to do that, I would love, love, love to hear. So uh, please tell me. But what I'm doing is I'm taking the time object, compare time, when time equals like three seconds, I'm gonna make this object immovable. Immovable, it means like the size of the, of the screen. You know, it means that this, this object cannot move anymore. Um, immovable, immovable. Set immovable, I'm gonna make it immovable. So, <clears throat> cool. So after three seconds, the ground itself become immovable, uh, which is what we wanted. So, we have this sort of ground, but it's not pretty to look at, and it's not very random. It's kind of random, but it's not as cool as we want it to be. So, two things we're gonna do next. First thing we're gonna do is to get a nice texture to be created instead of this color. I want a an actual texture. So what I'm gonna do is, I'll show you, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna create a tiled background and I wanna, I, I just brought an object from the internet. It's a little too big for me, so I wanna make it smaller. I'm gonna make it 200 by 200. This is pretty cool. And I'm gonna rip, just stretch it out pretty much all over the screen. I don't, I don't need the, the top part because there's no ground there, but this is perfectly fine. I'm just making sure it covers everything. Now, what I want to do now is make this one a mask of this one. And how it, how it happens, if I'm uh, going to blend modes and I'm doing source in, you can see, you don't see anything now, but if I'm dragging this one, you can see it becomes the ground color. So this is like the, the effect we wanted. Now, I'm gonna press play and you see that it's not working. And I'll show you why in a second. So this is not working, why is that? Okay, um, why is it not working? The reason it's not working is because this works only when it's on top of everything else. But when we create these objects, like the ground objects, they are created on top of the layer. So I want to put them, push them to the bottom of the layer when we create them. So when this is being created, I want it to go down to the bottom of the layer. So I'm gonna take the Z axis or, or sorry, the uh, move to bottom of the layer. And this is it, now it's gonna work. We're gonna press play and you'll see how it works. Cool, so we got uh, this effect, which is nice. Now, it's not enough. And why is that? Because it's not random enough. So we want it to be like more random with like parts that are like missing and stuff like that. So what I want to do right now is to create another object. We create, uh, we're gonna create like around a cir uh, circle or so. 
and creating a circle, opacity one, and hardness like that. Okay, this is cool. And I'm gonna just crop it. Now, what I wanna do is, um, when this object collides with the ground itself, it's gonna destroy the ground. And we're gonna make this one appear in random places so we don't know exactly which ground it's gonna destroy. Okay, so we have this ground, we're gonna call it Destroyer. And the ground itself, it's about time that we change its name to uh, Ground Part. Part. Cool. So, I'm gonna generate a bunch of these now. And we're gonna do it here. Okay, so. After I'm setting this one to immovable, I want to start like creating the, the ground destroyers. So I want to take like after three seconds, let's do another sub event and um, let's make it a repeat. And now because I want it to be as random as possible, I'm going to use the random method as much as I can here. So I'm going to uh, create a random of between zero and 30. And the random is, uh, I'm gonna generate like this uh, circle that I, showed, that I showed you. So I wanna create, create object. The object itself is the destroyer. We're gonna put it on a layer. It doesn't matter the layer actually. We're gonna leave it at that. And the X of it, the X of it is gonna be random as well. Between zero and 1920, which is the size of my screen. And the Y of it is also gonna be random between i don't know i don't want to use zero because zero is the top of the screen and there's no ground there so let's start with 300 to 120 180 which is the end of my screen the bottom of the screen now let's see if it's created it happens only after it stops moving okay so it created a bunch of these cool now i want to uh, make their size random as well because i want to destroy like uh, different uh, parts in different sizes so I'm gonna set the scale of it set scale of random I told you like before like as many randoms as I can push will make it nicer uh, and more random looking so I'm gonna put it between 0.5 and 3 for uh, or 2 actually let's see how this one goes and now I'm gonna uh, create the action of actually destroying the ground. Okay, so one destroyer is on collision with another object, which is the ground part. Let's destroy both of them. So ground part destroy. And destroyer destroy as well. And now let's see how it goes. Oh, one more thing. Okay, let's, let's press play and see how it goes. So it's all being generated and now okay cool but i want to i want to actually remove these ones as well so let's do after uh, three seconds um okay i'm gonna do it like really uh, in a stupid way but i hope you get the point and somebody will help me find a different uh, a better method i'll compare time we'll do it like 3.01 and we're gonna destroy the destroyer itself and because it doesn't know which destroyer am I talking about it's gonna destroy all of them so let's see it right now bloom and burn cool so let's try it a few more times boom and boom cool so I think we're pretty much done here now so I guess there's many many <clears throat> other uh, stuff that are uh, possible to do here and obviously we need to generate players and all that stuff but I think it turned out pretty nice uh, so I would really love to hear what you guys think about this method and if you have any tips for me or for other people just please share and we're gonna improve as a community out of that so thank you very much guys and see you later